Hey everyone, I am going to do a tutorial on how to make a serial um, data wideband login cable. Uh, there's places that you can just buy a cable yourself for like 50 bucks, but this costed me in total of probably uh, 20 bucks, 30 bucks Canadian. So all you're going to need to do is buy a DB9 RS232 uh, uh, serial cable, male to female. So I already have it cut so this is the male end you can see by the pins the focuses yeah and then this is the female end and then I bought a you don't need this unless your laptop doesn't have a serial cable which a lot of laptops don't so you probably want to buy it it's just a uh, serial adapter cable to USB so this is the male end and then USB into your computer so we won't need this, this is just for connecting it to your laptop. So you're going to cut the male end off, uh, I cut it at the very end, and then basically what you're going to try and do is, you're going to want to use uh, pins 2 and 5, so 5 is the ground, and 2 is the communication wire, or X. So this is the female portion, so they're actually labeled, so the 2 is right here and then the five is the last one so it just goes in order uh, we're on the male one it'd be the other way around from left to right as opposed to right to left so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the, uh, the end here I'm going to strip the end of this so you just need a pair of wire strippers just want to make a little cut so that way you don't end up accidentally cutting the wires and then you're just going to twist so I'm just going to so there You'll have nine wires. Uh, you'll probably see this. Uh, this is not a wire. But this, I know in some electrical wires, it's string that you can actually pull the jacket to rip off, but you can't unfortunately with this. Um, so sometimes you can find the wiring diagram or pin out online, but uh, it's probably just a lot easier if you can do a continuity test. So typically, green is your ground and on most cables red is actually the communication wire and then on port 3 so the very middle one is another communication wire which we don't use and that's typically blue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test uh, continuity between red and green to make sure that it is the right one and the way to do this is you're going to put a 18 gauge wire into pin 2 and 5 so I'll just grab that So I have 18 gauge wires stripped here on both ends. So I'm just going to go into 5. And then the other into 2. So you'll, you'll need a multimeter for this or a ohm meter to do a continuity test. Um, essentially, if you have an ohm meter, you're just looking for as close to zero ohms. Or any reading, pretty much. So, I'm gonna grab my meter. So, I, I use meters every day for my work, so I have an HVAC meter, so. But you can just use a cheap meter at like Home Depot. So, uh, this has continuity, microfarads, and resistance, so it'll auto find so I'm gonna leave that there I'll always say open and then once you have the wires or continuity I'll will beep or make it or uh, they'll show resistance so I'm pretty sure the gauge of this wire is they are braided so um, this is one of my work crimps but it only goes up to 20 gauge or 22 gauge uh, braided uh, I believe these are 24 gauge braided uh, but it can still cut the uh, 
the jacket off if you angle it. So basically, what I'll do is I'll just put up the holes and strip it. So the red and green are both stripped. So if the pinout is correct, then basically you just touch these two and you should get continuity, just like that. And just to confirm that it's not all connected together, I'll just strip the blue wire and test the green and the blue. So nothing, or the red to blue, and there's nothing. So that's that, basically green is typically always ground, so you're just gonna go one at a time, try the wires if it's not the red wire. So for example, if I want to use pin out three on here, I'll just move this over. So now it's on the third slot. Uh, it's not gonna show any resistance or continuity. And then pretty much you would just strip cables and, until you find out which one's given continuity. So that's the first step. The second step is once you find your two wires, you can cut the rest because you wouldn't need them. And then you're gonna grab a, So you're gonna grab terminal pieces. So um, this is to connect the red communication wire. It's a heat shrink tube. So this is for 22 to 18 gauge. I don't think you can buy any smaller. But basically, it would go over like this inside. Oops. And then you would have your wide band gauge go into the other side and you would crimp and heat shrink it. And then the ground wire, you would just add this. This is the wrong size. Uh, and then you put it into the ground. And then after that's all said and done, then you have your serial logging cable. Uh, make sure you connect it to your computer and download the hard drive or whatever it is for it. And then you would connect it into this and then into your computer and then that's it. $30 uh, data logging cable. Alright guys, I'm here in my car so I'm just testing this. So this is not how I would actually have it wired up if I was driving. So this is just all temporary. So I have a ground going there. Uh, this is Moretti. I honestly could just tape it but probably what I'll do is I'll just heat shrink it so it's more permanent. And then the slack of the cable will just go in there. Somehow, I'll, I'll figure it out. But, uh, and then, yeah, it's just plugged in to the computer with my Tatrix. It is logging right now. So you can see it's reading the wideband on there. So, yeah, there you go. That's how you, uh, that's how you set up your wideband serial data logging cable.